So at 17, I joined the military. I had to have my mom sign the paperwork. A combat medic in the Army, Oliver, now a veteran, says he saw a lot of tragedy in his time in Iraq. We treated a lot of like local Iraqi civilians, and there was a time when we were treating a lot of children. And I had I treated this one little girl, and you know her family was killed, like she was shot. Oliver was diagnosed with PTSD when he got home, and while the memories didn't affect him immediately, the invisible wounds of war eventually caught up. I think it was just the innocence that I saw taken at such a young age. Where when I started having babies, I was like, I can't let anything happen to them. You know, like I was super hyper alert. Oliver says he knew for his family's sake he needed to get help. It's kind of hard for a lot of people to ask for help, but I think once you ask, it's pretty amazing to see how open and receptive people are to, you know, lending a hand or just listening to you or offering advice. But it's that initial, like, just coming out of the, you know, proverbial mental health closet and asking for help. Helping him on his journey of life after war. Come on. Tasha. I never understood the dynamic an animal could have with, you know, your mental health. I just thought, I'm like, what's a pet? I'm like, what is a pet going to do for you? Chloe Chinchilla is the lead trainer and program manager for Canines with a Cause. I think the most surprising thing is actually just seeing how much they can actually help and just how intelligent they are in picking up on like even little changes to moods and behaviors. The program rescues shelter dogs, giving them a second chance, giving back to the people who have served our country. There are certain tasks that we train for, um, and the tasks are just to mitigate symptoms of PTSD. So whatever that veteran might need is what we we offer. She just comes in, hangs out, and she nuzzles me like when I'm getting irritated. Oliver says he understands now how important psychiatric service dogs can be for those struggling with mental illness. I always give her, it's time to work. Having her at my house now sleeping when she, she sleeps in my room, like I know she's more alert than I am. So it kind of lets me take the edge off of like, okay, I can relax and go to bed because I know she'll alert me if anything happens. Saving two lives at one time. The hardest part that I dealt with was telling everyone. So we had my wife's family over and I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. I'm we're probably getting a dog. I'm having these issues. Touch. It's no longer an internalized, you know, problem. If you open it up, you're sharing the beauty of, you know, your healing process and you're trying to let everyone else join in. And I think that was probably the most beneficial for me was just putting it out there. Girl.